Okay, thank you, Animal Engineering. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a little video. Uh, I was crook for a little bit, and then I've been flat out with a couple of little projects. And for some reason, I've done a whole lot of filming, and it just, the SD card didn't work. Got all corrupted and messed up. So, the time has come to install these bad boys. So, these are, I had the van 3D scanned oh, a few months back now, and I spent a lot of time on a computer drawing these up. Uh, if you stick around to the end of my episodes, you would have seen one I've done. Now, I did print it out of PLA, green. I've done some research, and PLA softens at a pretty low temperature, really. And being that they're going to be up against the steel of the van, I don't want to risk putting PLA in there and have it going all soft and munted because once these are in and the pillars are welded back together these will never come out again so if anything goes wrong with them be in the poop so I have been battling ABS printing and it has been an absolute nightmare uh, it's just I've got one part that I'm trying to do at the moment it's like a filter box I've been on that for four weeks. It has grenaded hot ends, print heads. Like, it has just been a nightmare. And it's consumed like every morning and afternoon for weeks. So, it's sort of, that's another reason why there hasn't been an episode really. But I think I'm on top of it now. Um, I've managed to do these. I had a break from that. And the second one of these is finishing up in a couple of hours. So, that'll be done. But, what I've got to do is all the way up in there where that little hole is I've got to make a bigger hole up in there for this to go basically when it's installed that'll sit inside oh you can't see shit with that door open can you That's got to sit inside that little channel there. And then the other bit gets stuck on. So I've been trying to work out how I'm going to get up there and drill this hole. Because it is way up there and there is no room. And then I remembered that when I brought my Dremel, a couple of years ago probably, I bought this little flexible shafty job. It's like a little cutting disc. So... Oh, I should be able to get up there pretty easy. Well, not easy, it's going to be a nightmare. But all the way up in there, I need to cut a hole. So let's do that. All right, well, that was very short lived. I've had that battery in the charger for months, it just sits there ready to go. But I don't know, it seems like it's flat. And of course, I only have one battery, so it's annoying as hell. But one thing I didn't mention, I don't think, is with these tubes, you can see that other little hole? There. So that goes all the way through. So I've sort of modelled and printed that. That goes all the way up and through. Holy moly. And basically what that is, is like a little conduit for electrical to go up through the pillar. So, I've got a big hole for the aircon to go up to a vent to blow air on my face in summer. I figured while I was at it and modelling it, I'd put like a little tube going through so I could get the wires up the top and it'll be all insulated and good. So, it's a reasonable size hole. There's not going to be a great deal of electrical up there. A uh, reverse camera needs power. There'll be speakers up there, they'll need power. Uh, it'll be like a little interior light for the glove box thing, that'll need power. And then I guess the main one really is uh, windscreen wipers. They're gonna need power up there as well. So there's a, a reasonable amount of wires and stuff to go up. Um, I'm fairly confident that I've made that hole big enough. Time will tell, but I have two of them. And worst case scenario is that center pillar of the window, uh, I can put like a little conduit up through that and run some wiring up there too, if I have to. But I feel this should be okay. 
Um, while we're waiting for that battery, I'll show you. I've done a couple of other little things. I think probably one of the main things I've done uh, since the last episode is I've finalised all the fuel system. So I've got the pump in. So you can sort of see, tucked in there. I've got the Raceworks fuel pump in there. Um, been through and I 3D printed a whole heap of little brackets to hold everything up and out of the way. And then basically, there's the fuel pump in there, it comes out into hard lines. This charcoal canister deal, um, I tried making the VE Commodore one work, but it was real big and I couldn't get it to sit anywhere sort of decent. That's better, isn't it? So I found this one online and it sort of fits in here nice. So that goes in and that vents and that's got to go up to front into the intake. So legally I have to have that. So yeah, for engineering I have to have that vent tube going into the intake. So also got the wires coming through. Put fuel regulator, fuel filter there. So I'll have a little flap in the floor or in the front of the step here so you can get to that. Comes up to these other little brackets that I designed. So they sort of clamp on, and then that obviously goes to the motor, and then this is the vent tube. Comes around, and then that'll go into the back of this filter box. Then I'm printing, and then yeah, the vent from the valve covers will go in there as well. Um, I think also, I don't know if I had this in there last time, but I did spend a little bit of time doing that, and then uh, the BMW seats there that I'm using for the front, I made up a mount for them, and then I couldn't find another couple, and they are very heavy, so I found those ones. So not super fancy, but they are light. Like the two of them is much, much lighter than one of these. And I want to be able to get them in and out nice and easy. So I've drawn up all the mounting for that and I sent that off to the engineer and he's signed off on how I want to mount them, which is good. So I can now make a little adapter plate and get that happening. Another little job, just put this little drip rail on. You know, nothing major there, It's another little job that had to be done. Also, uh, a couple of days ago I went through, I don't know if you really see that or not, but I've been through and just seam sealed the whole outside of the van now. So that's another job off the list. And then I've also, Read on the lead on these front pillars. So basically, I had to do that lead uh, so that I could give the inside another coat of paint. So I really wanted to get it all into epoxy before all these tubes go in. So, yeah, if you kick around on the old animal engineering on Facebook and Instagram, you would have seen that I've done myself up a list of jobs to do. So there's one, two. Three, four full pages of jobs to do on the van. Which seemed pretty scary, but it's actually been really good. Because I just come out here sometimes and you just stand there and look at it and you're like, Ugh. and you know all these things that need to be done. But having a list, I have found very good over the last uh, week and a half. I think I've done it. Um, I'll just come out after work and go, oh yeah, that's a little job, do that. So I've had it done for a couple of weeks and you can see there's a few pink lines in there, which is good. Just tick it off and by the time that's all pink, we shall be driving around. Well, we'll be driving around before then, but it'll be licensed and we'll be doing skids. So that's probably enough whiffy waffy waffling around. Oh, also, this savage little flat. This thing's brutal. 
Oh, that's another thing I've done. The original flat that was there, I welded that shut. And then, I've riveted the original fuel flat back on. And it has, like, spots for two springs. Now, I've only got one in there. And have a go at this. Oh, that's another thing I'd done actually. I had to extend the fuel filler neck. Um, it wasn't long enough. So yeah, I ended up having to chop that off and welded a longer piece on. So we got it out the front here. But I'm pretty sure this is going to chop my fingers off. One day it's going to catch me off guard. Oh, like that. Taking a bit to push it. why you'd want two springs on that. One is sufficient. Yeah, anyway, we'll cut back once I have power to my little Dremel thingamajig. Alrighty, well the pillar on the other side is now finished printing, so you can sort of see the sections there, the tube going through it. And some of that one. That's the one that comes up to the top. Alright, well, I managed to get those corners cut out up in there. She has a bit of a mission. Uh, pretty hard to see, but <clears throat> that's all done. So now we can see if. Seems to fit pretty good, so I think now we'll chuck it in there, we'll give it a go with the inside panel and make sure that still fits. When I, when I sort of brought these scans into Fusion, I couldn't quite really get these to line up properly. Um, I don't know why. What I should have done is, when I had the scanning done, I should have had this inside piece clear coat on and just scanned the whole thing together. Whereas I had it, this was scanned and then the inside piece was scanned as a separate scan and then I had to bring them together. And anyway, probably wasn't the best way of doing it. Um, but yeah, grab the inside piece and we'll see what happens. Alright, well that's in. Um, bit tighter than I would have liked it to be. Uh, this corner down here is on it pretty hard to be honest, but I mean, she's in there solid, that's for sure. So there is another piece that goes on the bottom uh, somewhere. We've got this bit here. So this would be where the like flexible hose comes on and joins to go up to the top. I sort of need to get all this in before I glue this in to make sure it's going in the right direction and not hitting anything. Right. So that'll be basically there like that. So, I think I can take this off now, we'll get the other one glued together, we'll glue this on, and then use some of that panel bond stuff like I use on the side panels, we'll cover this with that panel bond, <clears throat> we'll cover these tubes with the panel bond glue, and then we'll put these back on, and that'll clamp it and hold it in place until it sets, and then we should be able to remove these, and carry on doing the rest of the stuff up the top there. So we'll do that, we'll get this glued on and um, cut back once we're ready to actually put them in permanently. So you can see we've got the passenger side in now. This is 
little tube there at the bottom comes up through to the top uh, that one actually fit a lot better don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the top here you see it yeah. oh, a bit dark sort of comes up and over with just enough sort of clearance to all right well there you go they are all glued up and I'm pretty happy with how they're fitting inside the actual van as well so I think it's time to just hit the send it button and glue them in for good so we'll get the panel bond I'll smash some glue on the back of these and then we'll put the quarters on uh, click it into place and then we'll let it set overnight and then we should better pull the inside quarters off and they should stay there Alrighty, well it is the next day I've just come out and I've taken this side off she is in there nice and solid it is not going anywhere so pretty happy with that so yeah it's another pretty cool little custom touch I don't think there'll be too many other metros with air conditioning tubes welded into the A-pillars now this is just a quick episode but that did take me quite some time on the computer, uh, probably a good week or so, going backwards and forwards with the scans of the van, slicing it up and doing all sorts of crazy lofting and other jazz. But very happy with how that's come up. Now, I think next on the list is, it just looks good having those interior pieces in. They have not been inside the van for a very long time. And I quite like the look of it, makes it look a lot more finished. So I can't weld these ones in until the sort of top header piece is in. And that's going to need a fair bit of work. There's a bit of rust repair and stuff to do on that still. And also I've got to make a box up and a few other little bits and pieces to mount the windscreen wipers up there. So I think the next thing on the list will be mounting windscreen wipers. Then once that's done, we can fully weld this whole front end back together. Which is pretty awesome. I mean, these were... I think really they were one of the first things that just came out of the van. So I've done the front first before the back. So they probably haven't been in for about two and a half years, probably. Maybe three. long time anyway so I think we'll leave it there for this episode uh, drop a comment down below so you, let me know what you think of this little tubey idea and uh, we'll see you on the next one